Hi, I'm Tim Fryer, pastor of Christ Center Church, and you're watching Christ Center TV on YouTube. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for spending some time with us. This broadcast is about 15 minutes and it's designed to be a blessing to you. It'd be great to be able to use this for your morning devotion or maybe uh, evening time or even on your lunch break. Uh, send this message out to some people, some friends that you may have, some of your friends on Facebook or on Twitter. Let them know that you need to hear this message. So send the link, send the email, and let them know that the word of the Lord is coming forth on Christ Center TV. We're gonna go over to the sanctuary to hear the message that's coming forth. Uh, be ready to receive what the Lord is saying to you. Get your pen and your paper, your Bible, uh, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever you take notes with. Get ready to receive from the Lord, and I'll be back at the end of this message. Ministry with no joy is a dead sign for no power. That's why coming to church is such a bore and a chore. That's why coming to church is, oh, let me get on up and do this. I don't think I'm going today. There's no excitement, no fervor. There is no, there is no running. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let's go. I hadn't gotten there yet. I hadn't gotten dressed. Nowhere near the temple. But just because they said, let's go, I got happy. We don't have it. The Bible says, now watch this now, this is not the 12, this is the 70, which had nothing to do with the 12. If you look, look through the text of scripture, we find that Jesus brought the 12 and said, hey, I'm giving y'all power over serpents. The 12. But in this case, he sends out 70 more. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I want to give you power. I need you to go out and do ministry in my name. Come back, tell me what's going down. They come back excited, watch this, because they saw results. They came back with joy. If you keep reading the text, we'll say that even Jesus now rejoiced and said, God, thank you. You didn't give this to the masses. You gave it to these people and they get it. And now they are getting results. We have no power because we have no results. We are not excited about ministry. Many of you come in here and won't get involved anywhere. No power. Many of you could take it or leave it. I'll make it today. I might not make it next week. I don't know. Many of you come in here, join. You won't go to new members because you won't connect. No results. No power. When there's power in ministry, joy comes in our lives. I'm sorry, if revival broke out in here and we start laying hands, people getting delivered, people getting saved, and they going out to their communities, their communities getting saved, you'd be excited. You'd be like, I wonder what's going to happen Sunday. I got to come. I got to be here. What's going to happen Sunday? Pastor, you think we maybe should, we should have a Friday night service too? That's what happened down in Brownsville, Florida. Revival broke out. They started having church every night for about two years because people could, everybody couldn't get in on one night. Every night they had church and the place was packed. You start talking about extra service, you'd be like, well, he ain't talking about me. I ain't coming to that. <laughs> if I started telling you we're going to have revival for one week, all of you that are sitting in here now, you wouldn't be here. How do I know it? Because you don't come on Wednesday nights and we add one night. You're busy. I don't do Wednesday nights. Oh, I have to work late. Oh, I just can't make it through traffic. By the time I get to traffic, I'm just so tired. Oh, no, the kids got homework. Yeah, but they go to football practice. They go to basketball practice and soccer. They go to all the extracurricular stuff that you pay for. And you won't come in here on a Wednesday night and just give an offering. I can't get a no talk in here. Be offended. I, don't, I really don't give a rip today. Be offended. Because the bottom line is, we say we want God, but we want it, only want God to the way that we prescribe him. And that's why there's no power. Yes, Lord. That's why you can't cast a demon out of a cup. You can't even lay hands on yourself and recover. Much less walking down the street, seeing somebody with an addiction and say, come here. In Jesus name, never touch it again. The power, you don't even have the nerve. <laughs> Much less power. You don't have nerve. Which says you didn't have faith. You don't even have faith for it. It takes faith to walk faith to walk up on somebody and say, come here. 
You struggling with that? You want to let, you want to let it go? I really do. For years I've been trying to let it go, but I just can't. I understand. Come here. Let me lay hands on you. Declare it in Jesus' name. It takes faith to be able to walk up on somebody for that. We want church, but we don't want faith. We don't want power. We don't want that. We don't want that. Come on. We don't want that. Because that means you may look at me strange. And I'd rather have the proper standing in society than to have power. said they saw results so they were excited but you know why they saw results it was not just that jesus gave them or or deputized them it was that they were willing to go out and exercise i can't never say that word right and exercise Mm -hmm. what jesus gave them so if i put something in your hand and you never go anywhere you never see any results because after all, you got to be committed, number one, to go. You got to be willing to make a fool out of yourself in the name of Jesus. Who's willing to do that? Who, who, who's willing to do that? Who, who's willing to stand up and make a fool out of themselves for Jesus? Nobody, but we will do it for Facebook because we'll get out there and misspell words, say some stupid stuff that makes no sense, don't use fail check, and you look crazy with some of the stuff you say on Facebook, but you don't care because I'm just sharing what I'm thinking. <laughs> but when Jesus says go, declare this to that person. Mm-hmm. We're going to do that. I, I don't know, Lord. I don't know about that. I, I just don't know what they're going to say. No power. Because the 70 had to be willing to go to prove that the power Jesus gave them really worked. And we'd more rather be comfortable than powerful. I'd rather be accepted than powerful. All right. Yeah, that went over well. Just like, just like we practice, Jesus. <laughs> just like we practice. Here, let me give you one more. Go to 2 Timothy 3 and 5. Matter of fact, go to three and one. Just like we practice, Jesus, you told me it wasn't going to go over too well. <laughs> right now, I'm dumb enough to say some stuff you tell me to say. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure than, rather than lovers of God. Watch, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Paul says, hey, Timothy, these people turn away from them. Here's the deal. These people that Paul was was admonishing Timothy about were not outside the church. He says, these people have a form of godliness. Uh, Let's say, we'll use this one. Let's say this is God. Yet both of these are made in the likeness. Yes? Yes, A form of godliness, but denying its power. What he's saying here is this, that the day will come when people who have, who are a part of all the lists that I've laid out in the first four verses, Timothy, he said, these people will look like God. They will look like godly people. In other words, they'll be church people. They will have the outside of their religion. 
whatever religion they have, he said, they will have the external appearance. Now watch, uh, in, in this case, he's talking about Christianity. These people will have the external appearance of Christianity. They'll come to church. They'll put something in the offering plate. They'll dress the part. They'll have a Bible. They'll take notes. They'll have the sign of the fish on the back of their car and on the checks. But he says they will deny its power. What power? The power of Christianity, the power of living in Christ. They will deny. How, Paul, will they do that? He says because they'll have the external thing locked down. But what they will always do is hold at arm's length the power that Christ's life has in your personal area. So the outside looks great, but the personal side, the personal life, I don't want that. So what are you saying? This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. It looks like this. God says, this is who I am. This is what I do. The way I operate, when I do a thing, I make sure, God, that it goes all the way through, all the way to the end. Are you with me? I'm trying not to make sure I don't nail this board to this thing. I'm going the wrong way. Thank you, guys. Because the way God operates is that when he enters a situation, he follows through and he brings change. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Situation changes. Watch it. So now we have a form of godliness. The form of godliness with power will look like this. The form of godliness with power looks like this. However, when I deny its power, it looks like this. Wait, 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 but I look like him. I'm even the same color. He's slightly taller and he should be. He has more extension, his, more extensions and he should. But when I deny, deny his power, I can only start doing what I wasn't designed to do because I do not look like him. Why don't I look like him? Because I'm a part of the list. I look like him, but I can't operate like him because I got the list working in my life. And it wraps, it, it, it wraps itself and chokes out the power. It chokes out the power. So the problem with having no power is that I look like I should. I've learned through life experiences that regardless of where you are, what season of life you're in, uh, the issues that may be facing you right now, that there's always a word from the Lord. And I trust the message that you just heard was a word in season for you. I'd like to invite you to Christ Center Church. We're at 6472 Church Street, downtown Douglasville, Georgia, about 20 minutes west of Atlanta. Uh, so come out, visit with us, uh, experience our worship. It is off the chain. Come experience God with the Christ Center Church family. You can also uh, visit us on the web at uh, www.imchristcenter.org. That's www.imchristcenter.org. You can visit us on Facebook. That information is right there on the screen for you. So there are many ways that you can touch base and experience what's going on in the life of Christ Center Church. We exist to be a spirit-filled, multicultural, worshiping community, empowering people to replace a self-centered life with a Christ-centered life. I'm Pastor Tim. You're watching Christ Center TV on YouTube. I want you to be encouraged and remember, be Christ-centered.